Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On. It's Monday, it's a happy time to be alive. Of course it is, because we got a great result yesterday against Bournemouth. This is your regular Monday show of five things we learned. And today it is five things we learned from both the Dortmund game in the Europa League last Thursday and the Bournemouth game yesterday. I won't be dwelling too much on the Dortmund game, because let's face it, we're out of the Europa League now. And we all know what happened, but I'll, I'll mention it a couple of times, but then mostly talk about the Bournemouth game yesterday. So the first point today in the five things that I felt we learned is about Maurizio Pochettino's team selection in the Europa League. Obviously, there was a lot of hoo-ha about that over the course of the two games. I do think, having admitted that he felt he made a mistake in his first leg team selection, he tried to kind of strengthen out the team a little bit in the second leg. Eric Dyer and Deli Ali played, for instance, which to me, honestly, on first look, I thought was a mistake. I thought we were already out of that uh, competition by that point, and we should have just rested our players again for Bournemouth. But what I want to say is, I think when it comes to it, if you focus on the Premier League, he did the right thing. He wanted to make sure that we got six points out of the Aston Villa away game and the Bournemouth at home game. And not only did we do that, but we scored five goals and we didn't concede any. And we're in second place in the league. And let's face it, if we hadn't got those six points in those games, then not only would we be further behind Leicester, but Arsenal would be a lot closer to us. And even Manchester United, who won at Man City yesterday, would be closer to us in fifth place. Now, a lot of people are saying to me, oh, why are you bothered about Manchester City and Manchester United? You know, it it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect us. I still think it does. Whilst there are seven games to play for and it's mathematically possible, I don't want to be the one saying we've definitely got Champions League football. I I did say a couple of games ago, if we get the six points from uh, from the Villa and the Bournemouth games, I think Champions League will be nearly there. And Leicester, Claudio Ranieri is now talking about how Champions League is nearly there and I do think it's really close. And let's not forget, guys, Champions League is what we are aiming for. I think we were all saying at the beginning of the season, in the closed season uh, and in the pre-season, that we thought, you know, realistically fifth, probably, in terms of the the money we spent, the team we had. We had no idea that this team would gel so well and blend so well and get on with each other so well. So we should still be absolutely delighted with the idea that we might get Champions League football. Also, especially, let's face it, back then, we never thought that we'd get in the top three, realistically, and that is looking like a, a high possibility now. So we should be absolutely delighted. Now, don't get me wrong. That's not suggesting I'm settling for Champions League. I've heard Spurs fans saying I'm fed up with people saying they'll settle for Champions League. It's not about settling. It's about being realistic. Yes, we've got a chance of winning the title. Yes, we're keeping the pressure on Leicester. But to get in the Champions League for the amount of money that we've spent, let's face it, we haven't spent, and for the size of our club is an incredible achievement. So if we do do that, then we should rejoice in it and it will have been an amazing season. Anyway, my point being is that, you know, he's put all his eggs in the Premier League basket. He said... I'll rest my players against Dortmund, but we have to get those six points, and he did that. So, in terms of my first point of the things we've learned, that decision has been proven to be a correct one. Not necessarily correct in terms of if you wanted us to win the Europa League, but correct in terms of us keeping up our title challenge. The second point I want to uh, talk about in terms of things we learned, uh, it's about Dortmund. Let's face it, I'm willing to admit this, they were too good. They were a level above us, a cut above us, and to that end, Maybe Maurizio Pochettino did the right thing to some degree. We might have lost badly with our first team. I don't think we would. I think we'd have got a lot closer. But they are a team who have been playing that way for three, four, five years. It was all kind of brought to them under Jurgen Klopp. Uh, He taught them how to do it. They had a bit of a blip last season, but they've been doing it for all that time. And you could really see that. It was incredibly impressive, both in Dortmund and at home. They all knew exactly what their roles were within the team. They knew the tactical way to do it. And... The best way for me to describe it is I felt they played us at our game better than we did. Now, in terms of what comes from that, it's about us learning from it. It's about us growing for it. And we should aspire to be as good as that Dortmund team. Because let's face it, there's a high chance that we'll both be in the Champions League next season. And I would absolutely love it if we drew them in the group stages of the Champions League and we could go there next season with our best team, with probably a few improvements in the summer to our squad in terms of transfers and really show them what we're all about. Because as I've said before, we were out in Dortmund uh, for the game and after the game, and we spoke to a lot of fans, and they were really, like, Dor- I'm talking about Dortmund fans, they were desperately disappointed not to see Harry Kane, not to see Moussa Dembele, uh, not to see uh, um, Deli Ali play against them. They were really expecting this fantastic clash of the two pressing sides, of the two second best sides in their respective leagues, and they were gutted not to have that. So I would love that to happen. I would love to- us to aspire to be as good as that that Dortmund team. Not only on the pitch though, but off the pitch as well, where there's incredible community feeling, uh, incredible spirit about the city, not just about 
uh, Dortmund as a club, but the city seems to be run by the club and the club seems to be run by the city, the kind of way the spirit works uh, on both sides. Uh, and that is something I would love for Spurs to become, especially once we go into the new stadium uh, and really try and make ourselves the best London club in terms of attendances, in terms of the spirit, in terms of what foreigners think of when they come to London. They think, oh, I'd love them to think, let's go and see a Spurs team because that's exactly uh, the best football being played around. That's, that's something to aspire to, if you ask me. The third thing I think we learned over the last couple of games, Bournemouth, they'll be glad to see the back of us. Uh, they, conceded, uh, they conceded eight goals against us in two games and only scored once. And yesterday, what amazed me is just we didn't give them a sniff. And that's something that people say about football matches all the time when maybe you know a team has had a couple of half, half chances or, or a chance that they haven't scored. But I can't think of a game where we didn't even give away a chance. And that's what happened yesterday. There was one free kick that they headed over the bar, but Hugo Lloris didn't have a save to make. That didn't feel that dangerous. The delivery wasn't that brilliant. And we just completely bossed it. Unbelievable. Eric Dyer just in front of the back four and sitting in to make up a back three anytime they looked like they might break. There was just nothing given away and it was very impressive all the way down the line. Hugo Lloris had nothing to do. The fullbacks bombed on at every given opportunity. It's really struck me that since Carl Walker and Danny Rose have uh, started being talked about as possible England players and then getting in the squad. Their confidence has rid risen no end and that's definitely been helped by Kieran Trippier and Ben Davis pushing them on to another level. And let's face it, what will have helped is having Toby Alderweireld there teaching them how to lead, how to play a back four, how to play a high line. The amount of offsides that get given against opposition teams to us now is unlike any Spurs team I've watched uh, all the way down the years. So incredible leadership from Toby. Uh, Moussa Dembele, uh, of course, amazing, as was Deli uh, Ali. Christian Eriksen, I think, is getting back to his best form. I'm not just saying that because he scored a goal, just the way he takes the ball at any pace, in any places. His pace is good on the counter-attack as well. He's not given enough credit for that. And of course, both his and Deli Ali's understanding with Harry Kane, who of course scored two goals yesterday, is, you know, top notch so Bournemouth won't want to play us again let's not forget Bournemouth hadn't been beaten away from home since December and they'd only been beaten four times since we beat them 5-1 at their place so they are not an easy team a lot of people were thinking we should just roll them over and we did in the end but we really put in a fantastic performance yesterday and uh, that's why they'll be glad to see the back of us my first and uh, my fourth point in things uh, that I think we learned from the last two games I'm going to say I think Harry Kane is the best striker in the country at the moment. Sergio Aguero, obviously, in terms of his experience, his talent, uh, what he's done on both national and international stages, is world class. And Harry Kane is getting close to world class for me. But in terms of current form, the way he's playing and the way he's done this season, 20, uh, what's he on? 21 goals now in the league, uh, two ahead of uh, Vardy, three ahead of Lukaku, absolutely top notch. Not just because he's scoring goals either. His hold-up play is fantastic. And I said it to the guy who sat next to you yesterday in the ground uh, when he put in that, um, when he was holding the ball up all game and bringing other players in, but also when he made that fantastic slide tackle in his own box to stop them getting a shot away. I was like, I turned to the guy next to me and I was like, God, can you ever imagine Emmanuel Adebayo doing that? And let's face it, that is a big difference between last season, the season before, and now. We had Adebayor playing a lot of the time, or we had Soldado playing, or we had Paulinho playing in the midfield. And these are the kind of players that make a huge difference when they're on the pitch in terms of just not being up for it, not being good enough. And that is what we've got. And Harry Kane just utter, utter leadership. He will be a future captain of this club. I also think Eric Dyer will be a future captain of this club. And if I was going to choose between them, to be honest, if for some reason Hugo got injured or wasn't playing, I would choose Eric Dyer first up because I would say, Harry Kane, you just get on with your job scoring goals, bringing other people into play. Um, but it's not just his goal scoring and his hold up play or even his tackling in his own box. To me, he is like a Teddy Sheringham crossed with Alan Shearer. Uh, the way that he uh, sometimes comes deep and then, do you remember the little looped ball he played in towards Eric Lamella yesterday? Fantastic. How many other strikers who play alone up front can you say could play a ball like that? Certainly Lukaku hasn't got that in his game. Aguero's a good player like that, he can do things like that, but Harry Kane, an English striker with all that ability and all those different types of roles he can play, it's absolutely unbelievable. So proud to have him at my club. My final point of things that we've uh, learnt from the last uh, couple of games. It's about Bournemouth as well, but also about Harry Kane. I watched Match of the Day 2 last night 
And Alan Shearer, to me, he could not love Harry Kane anymore if he tried. It's like he wants to go out with him or something. It's incredible. He talks about him whenever he's doing a match of the day two or match of the day. They always let him talk about Spurs because he loves us at the moment. He said that he would play in his England team, Eric Dyer, Deli Ali, and Harry Kane in the first team without question. And do you know what? So would I. I don't think there is another defensive midfielder like, uh, like Eric Dyer in this country. And I don't think there has been for a long time. In my recollection, we've had defensive midfielders who have even, either been players who uh, have been forced to play there against their will or against their ability, someone like Jack Wilshire, or kind of one-dimensional defensive midfielders who can kind of just do one thing, like tackling, like back in the day, David Batty. Paul Ince was good. He had a few different strings to his bow. But for me, in terms of someone who's incredibly comfortable on the ball, in terms of someone who will sit back in the back, fo- in the back line to protect us when a counter-attack is on, and in terms of someone who has got leadership qualities, Eric Dyer is up there with no one else in the country. And I would absolutely start him for England. And I want him to be at Spurs for you know, 10, 15 years. I just think he's a fantastic player, great attitude, definitely a leader of the future, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, who's to say that Alan Shearer isn't right? I would definitely play him. I'd play Deli Ali, and I'd play Harry Kane. And you know what? Looking at the, I know this is about England, but we're coming into an international week. Maybe he could play, maybe Hodgson could play um, Eric Dyer and Danny Drinkwater from Leicester, and that would free him up to play an attacking three behind Kane of, let's say, Deli Ali, Ross Barkley, and then I guess realistically he's going he's gonna to insist on playing Rooney, but you could play Sterling, although I don't really rate Sterling, to be honest. I don't think he's got a football brain. Uh, but that could be, you know, Spurs making up the spine of that England squad. And then, second, just to that, I'll talk about Belgium a little bit. If they've got players who can play centre-back and Toby Alderweireld doesn't play centre-back for them in the Euros, then good luck to them. Because there's no way for me that Vincent Kompany is as good as Toby Alderweireld anymore. No way. Toby Alderweireld could become the best player in that tournament. He could win it for Belgium, I think. They've got so much other talent as well, obviously. But what a leader. What a centre-back. What a player. I just think, you know, to stick him out of full-back with Jan on the other side is just, you know, I can't believe how talented they must have. Uh, what other talented centre-backs they must have to allow that to happen. Anyway, guys, that's been the five things that I felt we learned from the Borussia Dortmund and Bournemouth games over the last week. Let me know what you felt we learned in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought of the video. Drop it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, at SpurredOnTV. Come on, you Spurs. Hi, guys. Barmy for Spurred On. This is my match review after Tottenham Hotspur 3, Bournemouth nil. Uh, we've just done about what feels like about 50 fan cams. Everyone's so positive, so excited. We got a goal after 44, 45 seconds.